Hi everyone, I'm TV Guide writer Kat Moon, and today we're breaking down the very confusing ending of the Umbrella Academy Season 3. Whoever created the universe built this place. Okay, what does any of that have to do with them? After watching the last 20 minutes of this season, we had a lot of questions. So we asked them to show runner Steve Blackman as well as the very fun cast. Get back here! Ah, that tickles! Today we're going to be going over some very important things, including the universe reset, the deal between Hargreaves and Allison, and of course, that post credit scene, including Ben. So if you remember, season 2 ended with Umbrellas getting back to 2019 in the very last scene, they return home, and then they see a new group of people, including Emo Ben. Yeah. There is one major problem. If you remember Harlan from last season who got powers from Victor, well Harlan actually killed all of the Umbrellas' mothers before the Umbrellas could be born. I tried to break the connection, I couldn't. So what that means is there's now a grandfather paradox, which has created a Kugelblitz. Is that like a cheese blitz? And the Kugelblitz is leading to another apocalypse. There are so many apocalypses in this show. By the finale, only two of the seven sparrows are alive, Ben and Sloane. Luther also just got murdered, and when the Umbrellas find out, they team up with the remaining sparrows and travel with Hargreaves to the other dimension, Hotel Oblivion. This is their one last shot at saving the universe. What the Umbrellas and the Sparrows didn't know was that Hargreaves' plan to reprogram the universe actually involved using the particles inside of their bodies to fuel a machine. You'll soon understand. When Allison, who made the deal with Hargreaves, sees that her siblings are being hurt, she's like, what the f I didn't sign up for this. Hey, you need to stop! I'm almost done! Allison stopped Hargreaves before he could finish reprogramming the universe, but she decided to press the button in the machine anyways, and this changed everything. Allison returned home, and this time her daughter Claire was back. Not only that, her husband Ray from the 1960s was also home. Hey, baby. When I first watched that scene, I thought for sure that Allison had died while pressing the button and she is now in the afterlife reuniting with her two loves. But that's definitely not what happened. Her deal with, with uh, the devil, with uh, Hargreaves, paid off. She got what she wanted. She didn't let him complete what he wanted to do, though he did get his wife back. But they didn't finish, uh, Hargreaves did not finish reprogramming the universe. Wait, so to be clear, Allison's deal with Hargreaves was to get both Claire and Ray back? Yeah, and, and we allude to that a few times, that what she wants to get back. And he's given her the impossible, which is she doesn't have to choose timelines because she can have Hargreaves and reprogramming the universe can give her both, which is two people from different timelines put into one. Okay, well, on one hand, I'm happy that Allison got her happy ending because she's been going through so much this season and last season. But if you've watched any time travel stories, you would know that if someone gets everything they want, it usually doesn't bode too well for the others or the entire universe in general. She does love her family and she is an extremely loyal person. That's one of my favorite traits about her. And so I think the side effects of kind of forcefully making everyone that she loves sacrifice everything and kind of venture into the unknown, um, it's going to affect her. Which brings us to the next part of the ending with the umbrellas and Sparrow Ben walking onto a courtyard. And big surprise, Luther has returned from the dead. Holy shit! My body! And we quickly realize that the umbrellas and Sparrow Ben have all lost their powers. That's not good. I think they're just so shocked by the fact that they are now powerless. Did Hargreaves give them a gift or did he give them something terrible? Because maybe in his mind, this is what they always wanted. They don't, they don't have the thing that they've complained about. They are quote unquote normal now. They're, they're like all of us. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? Can you go back from being a superhero? Many interesting questions posed here. Another important part of the ending is that even though Sparrow Ben was present, there is no more Sloane. Given Allison's past relationship with Luther, we can't help but wonder, is she partly responsible for Sloane's disappearance here? Did her deal with Hargreaves have something to do with this? Luther runs off to find his wife and Klaus follows him. Luther, you can't go. You were dead five minutes ago. You're fragile. I think wanting them all to be together, mm. to stay in their team huddle, and the most pressing sort of breakage of that is Luther running off. You know, he needs us all. He doesn't just need me. He needs us all as a group. And so, uh, you know, Klaus impulsively chases after Luther, but I think with the overall intention to kind of guide him back 
because oh, again, we've just been dropped into mystery world, quantum leap, and uh, we t we don't know what's up and what's down, and but you know who we are anymore again. Diego and Lila leave separately to go live their lives, and much of this would involve their new kid because Lila is pregnant. But what I also wanted to know was, would living their lives include looking for Stan, who was swallowed by the Kugel Blitz? Because it would be really sad if, spoiler alert for Euphoria, Javon Walton died there and only appears in one season of the Umbrella Academy. He could die and I'd be fine. No, I want a reunion between Diego and Stan and Lila and also Uncle Klaus, who he accidentally killed. Couple flames from Mr. Burns over here. Give me that, you little pyro. I do wish that there is some closure where, um, you know, Stan's mother is not a very good mother, so that, you know, Diego does have an opportunity to maybe adopt him, you know, so I think that would be some kind of closure for him to be like, you know, would you like to come and live with me or, you know, figure out a way to like buy him from his mother, you know, the same way dad bought Not buy him family. like you were bought. Like yeah, but you know what I mean? Uh, but like, <laughs> you know, but I wouldn't take it as, as weird because obviously he's not going to steal him, right? Or maybe he does. I don't, you know, I don't know. But that's that's something that you know it crossed my mind of being like I wish in season four that kind of gets tapped into of like him trying to reconnect with him. We of course also have to talk about that ending scene with Hargreaves. He is looking out the window with none other than Abigail, his wife. Everything so far for Hargreaves was leading to the point where he wanted his wife back, and he has her but not everything is as it seems. But it's also not hard to guess that what Hargreaves wants most of all from reprogramming the universe is to have Abigail back. Remember that one scene in season one, episode 10, where Hargreaves is talking to Abigail? I will die, but you won't. Well, what if this other way was always to reprogram the universe at the cost of his children in order to get Abigail back? And also, what did Steve mean by not everything is as it seems in that final scene with Hargreaves and Abigail? There is also the post credit scene, which if you missed it, go watch it and then come back to this video. But in this scene, we see Ben on a train heading to Yoido Station. And after doing a little Googling, I learned that Yoido is a finance and investment banking hub in Seoul. When I watched the scene, I was convinced or at least hoping that this would be sweet living Umbrella Ben, but nope, Steve told us otherwise. It's not Ghost Ben. It's not a Ben from that Umbrella timeline. It's the Ben that we met this season is that Ben on the train. Sad. I was looking forward to a scene where a living Umbrella Ben meets Sparrow to Cat Ben and then gets rid of the latter, but I guess that won't be happening. We did, however, ask Justin H. Min about this post credit scene. But can you tease why he is going to Yoido Station? Is he an investment banker now? <laughs> Cat, 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 I wish I knew. I truly wish I knew. When I filmed that scene, I was given no information about what we were filming, what it would be used for. And when I saw it in the post credit scene, I was as shocked as everyone. We have so many theories about this. Mine is that since Ben is still desperately seeking his father's approval, he is now working at Hargreaves Financial, which we saw a billboard of before they zoomed up to Hargreaves and Abigail in the earlier scene. My guess is that Hargreaves Financial has an office in Seoul and that Ben is now working diligently as an employee so that his father can finally recognize him as number one. Because even in this last episode, we see Hargreaves address Ben as number two, which, oof, brutal. Like everyone's dead, but you're still number two. I know, it's so sad. You must also have your theories about this post credit scene, but here is David Castaneda's very interesting one about the Ben on the train. I have a feeling that that's his doppelganger. I have a feeling that that's actually Ben's oh. doppelganger in, an, in that reality that we're at. And we're gonna have to figure out a way to coexist with our doppelgangers in certain ways. So for example, you're in Korea, your doppelganger's in Korea, Mine's in Mexico, working at a tire shop. You know, sweaty. Um, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what Allison. Be. Oh, well, obviously you have your family. But here's the thing, Allison. What if that's your doppelganger? But my, I think my doppelganger is in the Bahamas. <laughs> maybe, maybe, or maybe that How, person we that see it couldn't Allison. be her doppelganger because she knows that she was with her family. She has awareness. But maybe, maybe that doppelganger was coming back from the Bahamas 
and she was like, oh my God, you, Claire and Ray, you're here. <laughs> She's literally bruised and battled from the previous scene. Dude, sunburns, man. <laughs> I think we have to side with Justin on this one, but love the creativity, David. We still have so many questions right now. For example, what timeline are we in? And if there is a season four of the Umbrella Academy, how will the Netflix series relate to the graphic novels by Gerard Way and Gabriel Ba? I, I know what I want to do next season. I know what the beginning, middle, end is. And part of that is because I am close with Gerard and I've talked to him and I have a good sense of where he is going. Now, I think he'll go a lot further than what goes a TV show. I, you know, he's got 10 volumes in his head. I don't want to go on our own path completely away from the graphic novel. That's not my intention. What are your theories about a season four of the Umbrella Academy? Why do you think Sparrow Ben is on this train? Why do you think Five started the commission? And of course, what do you think the Brellies will do now that they have no powers? Live our lives. And don't forget to subscribe to TV Guide to watch more breakdowns and explainers of your favorite shows.